everyone, it's Desiree, and I am finally here with technique number three, and we're going to focus on Nouveau Embellishment Mousse. This is one of my favorite embellishments uh, for cards. You kind of get texture, shimmer, pearl, a little bit of glitter, all in one shot. So you're going to see my hands going because I did actually do this live when I first filmed this and I lost it. So here we go. I was able to save this part. If you do not like long, vi long videos, this video is not for you. Okay. So this is a long one because I do go into detail. I'm also not speeding this up the way that I do because I want you to be able to see everything along with my hands moving awesomely. Yes. So when it comes to Nouveau Mousses, this is their packaging and this is the regular size that you get. Now they also come in sample sizes and they're usually given in their uh, craft kits, their monthly subscription. So I'm able to build up my stash. Yay. I believe there's a total of 24 different colors. They did recently just add six new ones and I do have some of them. When you open up your packaging here, there is a piece of foil that seals this product and you want to keep it. Do not completely remove the product. It is like a very thick paste. Um, you know, it's tough with the consistency. I, I think it's a little bit thicker than frosting that you buy, not homemade. Um, but you definitely want to keep the foil there. There was a couple when I first got these when they first came out. And of course, it's my silver, gold, um, and mother of pearl. You can see how it's pulling away from the side. Um, that means it's drying up. Now, these are not completely rock solid. I can dig my palette knife uh, into it, um, but it's not as smooth. I mean, these will... They can just be feathered out like butter um, because that's the consistency that they have. Now, what I'm putting this on right now, just feathering, you can see a little goes a long way. I'm actually using Canson XL watercolor paper here. We're going to be using just plain cardstock, white cardstock, um, and it's the Recollections. It'll work on any white cardstock, no matter how heavy or how thick or how light. Um... And then I'm going to be using the Cansound watercolor because I'll be able to show you what you can do on watercolor paper with these. But you can see a little goes a long way. You can spread it. So it gives you texture. That's what I love about these. You can have layers. That's what I also love about these. Um, there's just so much you can do with it. And by that time that I'm talking, which was a lot because you can see my hands going, it's dry. When you use a thin layer of this product it dries quickly extremely quickly and and you'll know it with some of the techniques that we use um, if i kept spreading it out with my palette eventually it will stop when these dry they are permanent now we should be cleaning our palette night of another way not with our fingers and this is why i wear it so you can see that i'm able to get in there but it's it wouldn't be good with stencils. Uh, that would be good to smear it onto a piece of paper like I was with the purple. And I'm about to show that to you. Here's the silver. You can see this one's a little bit more drier because, is that a phrase? Well, we're going to go with it. Because you can tell it just pulls away from the jar. I don't know if these can be reconstituted. I don't want to just put water in these and see what happens. Um... I'm just not sure. What I'm curious about is if they do dry, if I'm able to scribble with them. Yeah, because I have some little ones. So I'm, I'm curious. You can see, even though these are starting to dry out, you can see, though, I am able to spread it with my palette knife. But I'm really trying to work that so that it'll go flat. But you can also see that they are opaque on top of each other. The, the purple did not react with that layer again they dry permanent once they're dry they're not moving all right so keep that in mind so i'm probably going to grab some tin foil myself and put that within these three 
that are starting to dry up on me and see if I can bring them back just a little bit or at least stop it. Now again, these are just some of the colors that I have. I believe I have 21 um, of the colors because I really do like them. Um, I use them in my art journals. You can use them as other accents. So I am a fan of the embellishment mousses. But let's start looking at some different techniques of what you can do with these. I believe it's like a science project. You know, let's see what mixes. Let's see what doesn't. Let's see how it reacts. Again, nothing's going to blow up here. We're not using any caustic chemicals, which is probably why my science teacher said we need to let you graduate from this class and not come back. Yeah, he was a little nervous because I always ask that. What happens if I do this? What happens if I do that? So these are the different things that I try when it comes to new products. So I grabbed one of my small craft mats. I have this bucket. I always keep this by, I got this at my local dollar store. And when I'm using stencils, which is what we will be using, I always like to keep just this pot next to me or close by with lukewarm water, because then once I'm done with the stencil, I'm able to just put it right in there and it's easier to clean. Again, I know I said it 10 million times. Once these dry, <laughs> they don't come off and they won't come off your stencil. So just to make things easier, I have a bucket um, or a pail, whatever you want to call it. And I just put that water in there. So here's the cardstock. Again, very, this is my scrap cardstock. This here's the Canson XL watercolor that I grabbed. And that other cardstock is a combination of the Recollections 110 pound, I'm sorry, and some scratch paper that I have. And what that scratch paper is, it's the text weight of Nina Solar White. Um, so this can go through my, it's cardstock, but it's able to go through my printer. That's the text weight that you can get from the, your local office store. It's a different 110 pound. We'll talk about that later. So this is how I open them. I take my palette knife. I cut around the side. Please be careful while you do this. Mm -hmm. Yep. There's a reason why I'm telling you. And then I just pull it back a little bit. Now you can see how much of butter, this is like softened butter that comes through it. And you can see that I can just take it and spread it with my palette knife. Now, can you blend with these? Absolutely. I can take this other color and just go right over that to get the different variations. Now it depends upon how you blend, depends upon how it will look. As long as you keep your palette knife, you can tell I have my palette knife too much at an angle. If you keep it a little flatter, it'll be a more smoother blend. Now, what you can also do is what I'm doing right here. You can blend, mix these colors. So if I took a little bit of that blue and a little bit of that green, mix them together on my craft mat, I now have a different shade of green. So if you didn't want the whole collection, even though we usually have to have the whole collection, hello, guilty, you could just get the primaries. So if you get the red, yellow, and blue, I had to think of my primaries there. Of course, if you mix a red and a yellow, you're going to get an orange. If you mix a red and a blue, you're going to get a purple, yellow, and blue. Of course, you're going to get a green. So you can mix these together. What you have to remember though, working with these is, it's not like you have to work at top speed, but you don't want it to dry because it starts drying. So keep that in mind. You can see how it's drying on my craft mat. Now, how do I clean that up? A little bit of water if it's right in the beginning, or I just use an alcohol prep pad. I get boxes of them um, from my local drugstore. Very reasonable and I just use that to clean that up. So I'm gonna use this blue here. I'm grabbing my aqua brush. This is by Nouveau. I really do like their aqua brushes. I think there's a good amount of control and I'm getting it down into my mousse. I can watercolor with this. So you can put your colors down, add your water to them. If you're not gonna use the color right away, if it's on your craft mat, add spray a little bit of water on it to keep it wet but you can see i put this on watercolor paper i'm going over that and i can't move it so again just like i'm coming over here only a little bit of it was still damp so i'm able to move that but you can see how fast it does dry 
so the dry times are very quick. You can take your water brush directly into the pot of color and drag it out that way. You can watercolor on top of them. I actually did this when it came to the Tonic Studios Craft Kit number nine um, with the detail frame die. I actually watercolored with that. So you can use a regular brush as well. Just because I use an aqua brush doesn't mean that's the only thing you can use. So a regular brush, let it be just a, a little stiff, you know, like the, the Ranger brushes, watercolor brushes are good. They got a good snap to them. The Nuvo water brushes are really good. Got a nice snap to them. Um, you don't want something that's very soft. These also are not going to ruin your brushes. Now this here is just a very large, it's like a stenciling brush. You can use those types of brushes as well to spread your pigment, to get a light coating. Now, when you're using these brushes, what you want to do is get that brush to clean it off just to get it back into some water. And my towel there, my cloth, is a little damp, so I'm able to rub it in there to get a lot of the pigment. If you keep all that pigment on it, it'll just get chunky um, and the bristles won't be soft. Even though they're stiff, they're still soft, um, but it'll clump up and you won't get a smooth blend like I'm doing here between the two colors. So you can put that brush in water and try to get that color as out, out as well. So you just want to make sure that you clean it so that you keep the bristles, the bristles. Don't let that product build up on those bristles. I hope that makes sense. I said bristles a lot, but you know what I mean. Um, if that's the, when that's the case, you just need, I have a brush when it comes to this for each of the color groups. So for the blues, for the greens, for the reds, that includes pink, the yellows, um, and the browns and so forth. So you only, I only use about six or seven brushes, um, and they can be interchangeable. So again, you can use a brush. The next way you can use this is the finger daubers. And you know, you all know, I love my finger daubers. Um, to me, they're just so versatile. Um, you can create circles and as you keep going out, it gets fainter and fainter. Again, you got to move quick because this is a thin layer that you're putting on. If you want it to last a little, put a lot and then you can blend that and keep going with it. Same thing with these finger daubers. If when I dip that into water, I can rub it out and remove the pigment. The color may still there be there because it stained it, but I'm getting that consistency, that texture out so that it doesn't clump up. You can see that's what I do with the pink one. And they are just fine. I usually clean them out on a um, paper towel or my cloth. Don't rub too much because then you'll just tear apart the sponge. But if you don't have these, use a cosmetic applicator. You can get a whole bag of these at your local dollar store because I have packs of them. When I'm looking to blend something or to put something on the edge real quick, I grab one of these. Then I don't have to dig. <laughs> Again, you know the whole laziness? There it is. <laughs> Sometimes these, I keep a little tiny jar of these up on my table. And when I need something really quick, I just grab it. But you can just fold these in half and blend the same way. Now here you do want to use a lot of product when it comes to these. Because again, they're not in the circle form. And you can tell, again, the moment you put it down, it, it will dry. It doesn't mean you can't blend out those edges. It doesn't mean that you can't create the shape that you're looking for. You just will work with it a little bit differently. I'm going to go back in with this makeup applicator just to try to brush out that hard edge. And if I kept working at it, you would be able to do that. But remember, these are opaque and transparent at the same time. So it all depends on the thickness of the consistency of which it is. When you have a newer one, it's a lot softer. It's like a soft butter. That's the consistency I want to say. It's like a soft butter. It, it can go translucent. If it's thicker, like the ones that have dried out a little bit, then you can make it more opaque. So again, just to keep that in mind. Now here's something else you can do with the Nouveau mousses. If you have one of those little misters or any mister, I have some water in this. And what I'm going to do is after I carefully open my packaging, I'm going to grab some of the product with my palette knife 
and I'm going to scoop some up and put some in this container. Now, it was really funny when I did this video and I did it live. Yes, I was trying to talk while I shook. That was funny. Yeah, you missed out on that one. So I'm going to put the product, just a little giggle there. I'm going to put the product into this container and then I'm going to put the cap back on and you just got to shake it. Now you'll be shaking this for probably about a minute, two minutes to make sure you can break down that um, paste that's in there. It doesn't take too long, but you do want to make sure that it is broken down, that it's mixed throughout it, because then it also won't clog up um, the mister that goes down to the bottom or the tube that goes down to the bottom. You don't want that to clog up. So you want to keep shaking it and you can, and you'll be able to see if there's still particles on the bottom. You just want to make sure that it's all dissolved. And then once it's dissolved, you've created your own shimmer mist, not a glimmer mist. Glimmer has glitter in it. So for me, a shimmer is just that. And you can see I've got this faint color. I should have used a darker color, duh. But you can actually see, and I'll show you this when this dries, that you act, it's translucent and you get this beautiful shade that comes behind it. So now I just created my Mother of Pearl Shimmer Spray. It's very light, it's very soft. So these are all the products that we use. You could also use a mini blender. You could also use a bigger brush. I have those Nouveau brushes. You've got your aqua brush. You've got a regular paint brush. So there's so many things that you can use. I'll even show you Q-tips in a second. So this has dried just a little bit. I sprayed some water on it and that's how I can get it onto my craft mat. Literally, my black one. Now, if you get this quick enough, it will come up. Um, I know I've stressed that it does dry permanently. It truly does. Um, but if you do get any on your craft mat or your work surface, other than paper, um, again, I just use the alcohol prep pads um, and it'll clean it right up and it doesn't do any damage to anything. Again, it's the alcohol um, stuff that you can get from the grocery store. So the next thing that we want to look at, as you can see my hands, it's awesomely all over the place, which is what makes crafting fun. Yes. So we're going to try some... Um, I believe I'm going to pull in my stencils. Now, I'm particular with stencils. Um, these are by Tonic Studios. This was actually one of their free gifts. I'm not, I forget which one. Um, I think it was nine. So, awesome. But they're sturdy. They're not, I don't want to say flimsy. I want to say fragile um, and very detailed. I, I just like it with a, a level of, firmness um, and not too thin because I'll, I'll beat up a stencil uh, to be very honest. I, I can do it in a heartbeat. Um, I know when I used the stencil from the Hero Arts kit, I believe it was Mang, it was a beautiful stencil, but I couldn't use my mousses on it. Um, they went underneath it. it. I couldn't get it to lay flat. Um, I need solid sections to keep the, the product in place, especially something like this. Again, I'm not good at it. Um, it's something that I still work on it, work at it um, when it comes to this. So I just like a more solid um, stencil. Love the details, but just give me some thick lines and some thickness to it so that I can just put it down and go to town on it. Yeah, change my mind. I like this one better. But you can see it's just like a texture paste. So that's how you would work with this. You want to push down onto the stencil, of course. You want to go back and forth. To me, I like to go back and forth in different ways because that helps me to fill in the stencil and then scrape off the extra because that extra that you have on your palette knife, you can put back into the pot of color. So it doesn't have to go to waste. Always remember, clean off the palette knife because it'll stay there. And you can see, you can get a beautiful impression. You can tell I shifted the stencil as well. You get some great height with it. Now, this will take longer to dry. 
Now, here's the funny thing. When I say longer, we're talking 10, 15 minutes. That's how long it'll take for that to completely dry when it comes to the embellishment mousses. Now, can you blend through your stencil um, with your mousses? Absolutely. You certainly can. So I'm going to grab three colors here. I'm going to, I think it's Coral Calypso, Lemon Sherbet. I'll have all the colors listed below by all means. And all the products I use will be listed below as well because I forget the colors. <laughs> I just grabbed and had fun. So here I'm going to start with the darkest and I want to make sure that I have a good coverage on it. Then I'm going to pick up my next color and I'm going to put that down and I'm going to go right over. And if you noticed, I did not clean my palette. It's okay. If I went backwards in the product with the palette, then the other color would have gone in. That's okay. But with me, by me having both of those colors there, I'm able to mix it. So you can see that blend as I bump the table. Now I'm going to pull in the yellow. I wanted to make sure I went to the very top and now I'm going to come down into the coral to blend those two colors together as well. Now, because I'm going back over the coral, I can't put that product back in. I don't want to mix the colors within the pots. But what I really like here is this background that is being created because you're getting texture, you're getting dimension, um, and you can tell that it was opaque. So I really like that. You may see that again. And then once I lift it off, you can see you have a beautiful gradient of the colors going up. Nothing special, no water added, just the stencil and moving quickly to get those colors. Now you don't have to move as quick because this is not as thin of a layer. It's going to take more time to dry. So you do have that work time to go into your next color and to blend them together, which is awesome. So you can see that. That's the beauty of these. I really do enjoy them. And I know one of my followers, I know who it is. I don't like to say names, um, you know, because it's privacy. You can see the comment below. Um, they had asked that question and she wanted to know, can you use mousse, embell the embellishment mousse on stencils? Yes, absolutely you can. Now, and again, I can't stress enough, all of these things that I do, these are just my opinion. This is how I work with these products. I'm sure there are other ways. I'm sure that there are 10 million people times better than me when it comes to these products as well. So I encourage you to check them out. And if you have a technique that you like when it comes to this, please leave it in the comments. I would love to know, and I'm sure everybody else would as well. So on to the next way you can use a stencil, as I gabbed there for a little bit. I told you the video was long. You can use your finger daubers or a mini blender tool or a, um, I forgot, cosmetic sponge. Whatever it is, you can use that and just press down onto the stencil. You can see I'm moving across as well, just not pushing down. That's why I like a firm stencil. I beat them up. And from that one color, I got different gradients. So again, here I'm cleaning. I'm just going to twist my dauber in there. Got most of the product out. Best thing to do though is to dip it in water. I didn't have, I didn't want to dip in the pot of water that was on the floor. I usually have a little cup. Just dip it in there and then do the same thing and it won't destroy the sponge and you'll get the pigment out. The, the other beauty of this product is you can mix it. So here is some clear modeling paste. Now, again, this is clear, it's not white, so it's not going to alter the color. What this does though, um, when you're mixing it, now when you first put it on, it kind of gives you a more solid color. You know, to me, these are not solids. These are shimmers. They have a pearl, um, a hint of pearl to it. Now, again, not glitter, pearl. There is a difference. Sometimes we like to think that they're the same. Um, but this will dull, bring down that pearl color just a little bit. 
So that's something to consider for when you do mix your colors. Um, I don't know how else to explain it, and I'm sure somebody else out there, and I'm looking through all of the um, cards that I had made, but when you, as I said, when you mix it, if you're looking for these to be solid without a shimmer, just add your clear modeling paste to it because it won't take away the color. Again, it literally just removes the shimmer. It dulls it. It makes it a matte. There you go. That's what I was looking for. You can also mix glitter into these. So that glitter that I had, Ivory Sands, came in one of the Tonic Studio kits. I just poured that on a little bit, a little bit, into this mixture. And let me tell you what, it dries beautifully. I'm, I'm sitting here as I'm doing my voiceover, I'm looking back at all the cards, um, you know, all of these techniques and the cards that I used, and I'm looking back at them uh, just to remind me what I did, basically. And it's, it's really amazing um, how the glitter is just throughout it and again the the paste goes to a mat it just removes that so that's something you can do too if you've got glitter mix it in there have fun with it so i hope we're all taking notes on these there's a there's a lot of things going on here <laughs> when it comes to this so these are the basic ways these are the ways that i found to work with Nouveau, I'm all Nouveau Moose, that is. I'm always finding new ways and different ways to use these products because I do like it. I, I'm not a glitter person, but I do like the pearl look when it comes to, when it comes to something. I also like the matte look and there's that spray. You can see the shimmer that it gives you. Um, after it's settled and, and it dries so it's really pretty but and I do have glitters and I, and I work with them but that's glitters it's just not me <laughs> I'm not a glitter girl one mainly probably because I hate cleaning it <laughs> it gets all over forever but you can see as we're paging through these cards all these different techniques that we did and I'm seeing so many beautiful backgrounds on here you know, as long as you let your layers dry, you don't have to worry about making mud. So if you mix an orange and a purple, you're not going to get mud. If you mix them when they're still wet, you're going to get mud. Um, but if they're dry on the paper between each layer, you're not. So you can have a lot more fun with these. You, it's very versatile. If you want to extend them and if you want to just dull in that pearl effect or shimmer effect, use your clear modeling paste you you know depending upon how you use this you could actually double triple quadruple your mousse life's expectancy because you can just mix it into a paste and it can be any paste you can mix it into a white paste it'll just lighten the color you can mix it into any paste that you want now here i grabbed that makeup sponge again and this color to show you that if you've seen my previous videos, you know I love Vintage Frodo on the edge of a lot of things, a lot of cards that I put together. It's just something, I don't know, it's just something that I do. But you can do the same thing with your mousses. So you can take any blending tool, finger dauber, makeup sponge, mini blender, and you can do the same thing. And you, this time, you're creating a pearl edge. You've seen me take a, a card and dip it into down onto my Versamark pad and put embossing powder around it you can still have a shimmer if you don't have embossing powders or that here's another way q-tips always have q-tips by me they are great accent makers so if you just put your two your q-tip down into the product you can make dots now of course they would be better dots if i was thinking about it but to real quick show you you can make dots you can put dots around your your card or your art journal or whatever, and then use your glossy accents on top of that. So if you don't have the gloss drops, but you love them, here's another way to make them. If you have glossy accents and something color, then you can have a, an enamel dot on your card. 
You can draw with it. You can create shapes with it. You can blend with it. So there's all kinds of things that you can do. And again, you don't have to be limited with the products to use to blend them. I'm surprised I did not show you my finger. Um, I am one to put my finger in there um, and just go to town with it. Um, usually that's what I'll use around the edges so that it's just not neat at all. You can also apply, now I showed you with regular cardstock and I showed you with watercolor paper. You can apply these to wood pieces, those wood die cut pieces. Just take, I, that's when I take my finger and I put it right on there. I let it dry. You can put glossy accents on top of that. So this product will adhere to other items besides paper. I do not know about metal. I'm sure it would. I don't think it would stay solid, but you know, maybe in the cracks you can get that color and so forth. Um, you can layer them, as I said. So here we have that one background. I grabbed one of my finger daubers and now I'm just gonna put that color right on top of that piece. I'm going light handed, I'm not going heavy handed, but you can see it and you can see that image. So it's a little translucent because it's not solid. Meaning I didn't put a solid application. So yeah, that sounded great guys. Woo! So again, these are just some of the colors um, that are out there. I will give you links as to where you can get them. Um, I believe they are priced. You cannot buy the sample size. Only the larger tubs that you see in front of me are available for sale. Um, but again, they do last a while. I can't stress enough. Keep the tinfoil on there. Let that sit along the top. You will see moisture inside that. It's okay. It doesn't go moldy, but it's just the moisture being trapped in there because that's what you want for these. I'm not giving up on my other three. I'm sure I will find something to do with them um, to play around to see what would happen with them. Now, don't forget, we're going to have a card that comes after. So that'll come shortly after I post this to show you what it would look like if we use these for a card. And you never know, you may see one of those backgrounds because I'm seeing a lot of them that I really like. Um, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, hit the thumbs up. Again, this is number three in our technique series. And remember, this is a series that you guys put together. So these come from different questions that you ask. And from that one time when I asked, what techniques are you interested in? What do you want to learn about? Um, this is how this is coming or being derived. And I think it's great because there are some things that people came up with that I had to ask, what is that? So there's going to be some things that I'm going to be putting together that I'm not really sure with. So you never know. You may see something blow up. <laughs> Anything is possible. So I do apologize. This is an extremely long video. I'm very happy and amazed, actually, if you made it to this far. So if you did, hit the subscribe button. There's got to be something there that you liked that kept you drawn in. I'd love to have you part of my little creative family here. Hit the thumbs up if you did like this video. All the products that I used will be listed down below or will set groups to where you can find them if you are interested in the mooses. Mises? How do you say this? I'm not quite sure. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave those down below as well and I will get back to you as soon as I can. I do try to get back to you as quickly as possible, but you know what? Life. It's an awesome thing and sometimes it just gets in the way. Um, and it just gets out of control. I hope everyone's having a great day. Um, I'm glad you made it this long. But what is really most important to me, um, always remember, be creative.